comes 19-year-old Mike Tyson as he emerges from his locker room and comes toward the ring. You will note one of the characteristics which sets Tyson apart. He wears no robe. He wears no socks with his boxing shoes. He says that that makes him feel more like a warrior, more like a gladiator as he entered the ring. He'll be 20 years old on June 30, can eclipse Floyd Patterson as the youngest heavyweight champion of all time if he wins the title any time before May 5, 1988. And there is already discussion behind the scenes in boxing of a possible match between Tyson and WBC heavyweight champ Trevor Burbick as early as December of this year. But first, he must get by this fight against James Quick Tillis. And we'll be back for round one right after this. The referee is Joe Cortez. There are three judges who will score the fight on the round system with supplemental point scoring in case of a draw. Three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight count. The mandatory eight count is in effect. Tyson in the black trunks and James Quick Tillis in the white. Customarily, Mike Tyson does not feel his opponents out in round one. He tries to take them out. He tried to take Quick Tillis out with that first punch he threw, and Tillis showed why he may be a little bit different. He moved right out of the way of it, and Mike missed by quite a bit. The key to the fight will be Tyson cutting off the ring and pinning Tillis in corners and on the ropes like he did right there. Quick Tillis is seven pounds lighter than when he fought uh, Terrell Biggs. That would indicate, the look of him would indicate he's in much better condition. I think the postponement allowed him to get in better condition, will allow him to move more. The question is how long can he move? His record is he's dangerous early, Jim. Can hurt you with either hand early in a fight, but has always faded and tired badly. See Tillis delivering the left jab and following with the right. He is not running away from Tyson, and Tyson goes to work on the body. Some say that what sets Tyson apart is the intensity and the effect of his attack to the body. It is amazing to see such a young fighter understand so well the importance of body punching. Generally, it, it takes a, a veteran to understand that by punching to the body, you can take all that movement away from James Tillis, and that's what Mike Tyson plans to do. You saw Tyson with the left hook splitting Tillis's guard and getting the punch through moments ago as he had Tillis in the court. Joe Cortez, the referee, the only one of the three judges in Las Vegas a few weeks ago who scored the Larry Holmes-Michael Spinks fight in favor of Holmes. That was an excellent right uppercut by Quick Tillis, which is a punch that should be effective against someone who comes in burrowing in like Tyson does. For some reason, Tillis landed. He was so shocked he grabbed. Quick Tillis cannot, in my opinion, win a decision in this fight, Jim. He has to try to take Tyson out while he's fresh. You see that Tillis grabs Tyson behind the head when he ties a fighter up. He customarily does it by tying them up behind the head. That will not deter Tyson from flailing away at the body, as he did right there. And Joe Cortez, the referee, quite properly did not break the fighters because Tyson's hands were not tied up. Again, the right uppercut just missed that time by Tillis. Late in round one, a round in which Tillis has not acquitted himself too badly, as he has managed to stay away from Tyson's Thunderbolts, although he just took a right hand. We'll be back. This is ESPN Classics Mike Tyson Marathon. Stay tuned as Tyson terrorizes Trevor Burbick to win the WBC heavyweight title. And then Iron Mike hammers Larry Holmes and takes out the undefeated Michael Spinks. We bring you back for round two and you hear the bell. As you saw before we went away, Tyson did land one punch after the bell had sounded to end round one. Most people in boxing, if they're looking for a way to beat Mike Tyson, believe it will be done by a fighter who is able to move and punch effectively on the move. As Henry Tillman did in winning two fights from Tyson in the Olympic trials as amateur.
pitcher. All right, bring out, bring out, bring out clean. Come on, bring out. Tyson Let's go. Come on, just go. landed two solid left hands. Head. The difference, obviously, is here Mike Tyson has 10 rounds to wear down his opponent. He had to go all out the three rounds amateur limit. Lost to Tillman in the Olympic trials. Right hand lands flush on the cheek of Quick Tillis, but that was an extended right hand. He was not in close enough to do maximum damage. Yeah, but he's not letting go of Mike Tyson. He might be shaking his hand, which, which generally means that he was hurt by the punch, even though it was, as you say, extended. Simply a matter here of Tyson finding the range. He can't be too far outside, but he can't cut so close that he allows Tillis to grab him, as Tillis will always do when Mike lets him. Tyson can be hit. He was openly disappointed with the number of times that Steve Zowski landed on him in his last fight. Any custom auto trained fighter prides himself on his defense. And Mike really was disappointed that uh, Zowski hit him with some right hands, really silly right hands that he should not have been hit with. It was just a loss of concentration. The right hand by Tellus was blocked there. A jab by Mike Tyson, a rare punch for him in his first 19 fights. A punch that he is smart enough to know that he's going to need if he's going to move up to world-class competition. He's been using it more in training and says that we'll see a lot more of it in this fight. He just tried it there until till it's knocked down two of them. Good head movement by Tyson coming in. For the moment, Tyson is not nearly as busy as he has been in some of his previous fights against much lesser opponents. No doubt a sign of the respect that he must have for a fighter of Tillis' experience. There's the punch that, in my opinion, is going to win the fight for Tyson. It's that right hand to the body. He won't knock Tillis out with it, but he will wear him down and bring his hands down so he can land punches to the head. He got him with the left. And you saw Tillis staggering backward momentarily. Not seriously hurt, but Tyson has begun to break through the guard around the face. And there's a right hand as Tyson continues to land and round two ends. Terrific. New York State thinks of as its own Mike Tyson. Right now, all of the aggression is out of Mike Tyson. He is keeping his distance. He's trying to learn how to box with James Quick Tillis. It is not, or has not been to date, his fight. So if Quick Tillis has done nothing else at the present time, he's taken Mike Tyson out of his game plan. Tillis tying Tyson's left arm up there. Tillis's trainer and co-manager, Bo Williford, said that he had been working with him for the last six weeks on tying up Tyson's arms. But that time, Tyson got the left hand through again after ducking a Tillis bunch. Just one punch for Mike, and that's not typical. He has to put punches together when he gets inside. Keep busy. Outstrength Tillis on the inside and let his hands go. He is being considerably more careful than in his previous 19 appearances. 
Remember against Jesse Ferguson that look at the hand speed by Tyson. That's one of the things that's astonishing to see a man of this size and this build with such quick hands. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that we'll be taking a station break right here at the end of this round, round three. I was saying in the fight against Jesse Ferguson, Ferguson fought a negative fight, fought to survive for the most part. The punch that turned the fight around was a, a combination, actually, a right to the on, body man, and then up. doubling with it coming let's right go, up go, the middle. On, let him go. Looks to me like Tillis is open for an uppercut up the middle the same way. Come on, get those arms out. Come on, work out of there. This is an important learning experience for Mike Tyson. He's going to have to be able to handle a quick Tillis to get to the top of the even. He is right now. And Tillis is making the mistake of trying to trade with Mike Tyson. He should be moving off the ropes. Instead, he got into a little bit of macho there, and Quick Tillis is not going to be around long fighting that way. Again, he scores with the right uppercut. Does Quick Tillis. Repeatedly, Tillis has scored with the right uppercut. But Tyson is beginning to wear down Tillis' defenses, particularly when he catches him against the ropes and then releases the hands. Round three coming to a close, and Mike Tyson warms to the task once again as the round comes to a close. Back with more after this word from our local station. scoring in rounds as they do here in New York State. I had the first round even and have given rounds two and three to Mike Tyson. Right hand lands on the point of the chin, but he didn't get all of it. And a good left hook by James Tillis. And again, inexplicably, Quick Tillis grabs after he scores the best punch he scored in a couple of rounds. He should put punches together much in combination, and he might give Mike Tyson more trouble than he wants. He also can't lunge in with that left hook like that, because he's going to get caught. And having felt what Tillis has to offer in the way of the uppercut and that one left hook which scored, Tyson now appears to be a little less shy about stepping up inside. But Tillis is landing punches. He's landing hard punches, and interestingly, Mike Tyson is taking them. I mean, he doesn't want to get hit with them. But one of the questions about him, as it is with all developing fighters, is can he take a punch? Quick Tillis has had people like Carl Williams on the deck twice, Greg Page on the deck, Marvis Fraser hurt. He can punch when he's fresh like this. Switches left-handed. Tillis is a converted southpaw. Punches hardest with his left hook. Fought as an amateur. Fought as a southpaw as an amateur. Turned around in the middle of his amateur career. Both of those left hooks miss slightly for Tyson. But how low he gets to duck under those punches. Extraordinary. Tillis could have butted him with his knee there. Right now, Mike Tyson is having problems solving James Quick Tillis. He doesn't really know that the things that work for him normally are not working for him, and he's going to have to go to things that are a little bit more sophisticated. He's going to have to cut the ring off better, and he's going to have to find the range better. He just can't walk inside and let Tillis tie him up like that. Has to let his hands be busier, and at the same time, avoid getting hit himself. As for Tillis's chin, you might note that a long time ago in 1981, he went 15 rounds with the very dangerous puncher Mike Weaver, largely by staying away. But on the other hand, he suffered a technical knockout in the first round against Tim Witherspoon two and a half years ago. You'd have to say that is a fluke, the loss to Witherspoon. Uh, Tillis claims he slipped on some water in the corner and was distracted before he got punched. Again, he lunges in and gets caught. The left hand. Drops Tillis onto the seat of his pants as round four is coming to a close. I'm not so sure that his left, his, his right foot wasn't stepped on, causing that knockdown. There was definitely a punch, but I believe that Tillis's right foot 
was stepped on by Tyson at the moment the blow landed. All right, let's stay right here and take one more look at the knockdown. I'm clearly wrong. That was just a clean punch. He was off balance. We talked. We said that Tillis could not lunge in with the left hook. He lunges in with the left hook. Tyson very cleverly slips it, comes back in a punching position, and lands a left hook. That was not the full power of Mike Tyson, but Tillis had lunged, was off balance, and he was able to drop it. Let me repeat that there was no tripping involved. It was a clean punch. There is the Tyson corner. You see Kevin Rooney in the year of Tyson, another custom auto trained fighter. The longest Tyson bout was the fight against Jesse Ferguson. A TKO at one minute, 19 seconds of the sixth round. Now round five begins here in Glens Falls. Tillis still willing to trade leather with Tyson. Stop! I don't think that was a punch. The knockdown punch was a punch that hurt quick, Tillis. All right, bring up. Bring up. It definitely got his attention, but he wasn't debilitated by it. It's not a that was not looking did not look to me to be the beginning of the end. He might have learned not to lunge so badly with the left hand, though. And there you see Tyson whacking away to the rib cage with the right hand. Again, Cortez warns Tillis. For holding behind the head, Tillis switches briefly to Southpaw and goes back. And again, he holds behind the head. Mike Tyson is not doing his job in those clinches. His hands are free, but he isn't using them. Right there, there's no reason for Mike not to rip punches to the body. We talked about his ability as a body puncher. He has it, he just isn't using it. All right, bring it up. Let's go, step back. Tillis turns away for a moment to spit, but so far he does not look hurt, as Alex pointed out. Looks rather fresh. Has had a tendency in the past to tie. This is not a good round so far for Tyson, who is missing more punches than he lands. That's frankly astonishing because the opportunity is there for him to do a lot of damage. There he gave a half-hearted effort at that combination we talked about, the right to the body and the right uppercut, but he didn't land it. He did land punches at the end of the flurry. And that's what he has to do with Tillis. He has to keep punching. He's just letting isolated punches go. Like a single left hook, nothing behind it. He has to punch in combination to be effective. There's a great tendency here to compare Tyson to another young heavyweight. Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist Terrell Biggs. Tillis extended Biggs to the full eight rounds where Biggs got the decision. And that was on January 25. Two good short chopping right hands by Tillis. Tyson waiting for Tillis to open up. And those two body punches did get Tillis' attention and he grabs. Just the grimace on his face alone, I think, indicates that Quick Tillis was hurt by those two body punches. And the right hand got through the guard onto the cheek of Tillis, who looks a little the worse for wear now in the last minute of round five. So after a slow first minute and a half in this round, Mike Tyson has reapplied the pressure. And if he's shown you one thing today, it is that he knows how to close out a round and leave an impression in the minds of the judges. We'll be back right after this. tries to liven itself up, try to provide some encouragement to Mike Tyson. Most of them have come here today hoping to see a knockout and, frankly, expecting to see a knockout. Tyson tries to deliver with the right hand and steps in and throws the left. Tillis again ties him up. James Tillis is still a dangerous fighter. This is the, the most power and zip he's had in his punches at this late stage in a fight that I can ever remember. Tyson knows it, and I just don't think he's going to take any unnecessary chances. You could be sure he wants to keep the knockout string alive. But 
he also is just not going to take any unnecessary chances. He wants to win a decision, win a fight. He'll be 20 and 0, still undefeated, and in his mind, I think, still well on his way to a heavyweight championship. But Tillis had revived his career somewhat, even with a loss, if he stands up. Well, this certainly is a respectable showing, and there certainly will be notoriety to the man who broke Mike Tyson's knockout string, especially if Mike resumes the knockout string after this fight. difficult to know why a crowd is booing. You can't psychoanalyze 8,000 people. I think it's possible that they're disappointed in Mike's performance. They came here wanting to see what him do what he's done in his previous 19 fights, and he doesn't appear at this point to be going all out to satisfy them. Landed the left hand, but Tillis stood right there. Cut is no longer a problem. It has been effectively stopped. Tillis comes straight in. Tyson, one of the few times we've ever seen him swinging wildly. Good left hand. Tillis is still there. decision here. The scoring might be slightly different in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Tillis continues to give a good account of himself. And backs Mike Tyson up onto the ropes, which is a first. A little of Tyson's own medicine. It will be interesting to see how Mike reacts to this. Closing with a flurry. Big smile on the face of Bo Williford as he steps into the ring. I think he's quite proud. Win or lose of James Tillis. Here is the official scoring. Judge Bernie Friedkin scores it six rounds to four. Judge Allen scores it six rounds to four. Judge Tony Moretz scores it eight rounds to two. For the winner by the end of this decision, and still undefeated, Mike Tyson. So for 19-year-old Mike Tyson, move the record now to 19. We're making 20 wins, no losses, 19 of them, eight rounds. Well, Biggs got the decision, and that was on January 25. Two good short chopping right hands by Tillis. Tyson waiting for Tillis to open up, and those two body punches did get Tillis' attention, and he grabs. Just the grimace on his face alone, I think, indicates that Quick Tillis was hurt by those two body punches. And the right hand got through the guard onto the cheek of Tillis, who looks a little the worse for wear now in the last minute of round five. So after a slow first minute and a half in this round, Mike Tyson has reapplied the pressure. And if he's shown you one thing today, it is that he knows how to close out a round and leave an impression in the minds of the judges. We'll be back right after this. itself up to try to provide some encouragement to Mike Tyson. Most of them have come here today hoping to see a knockout and frankly expecting to see a knockout. Tyson tries to deliver with the right hand and steps in and throws the left. Tillis again ties him up. James Tillis is still a dangerous fighter. This is the, the most power and zip he's had in his punches at this late stage in a fight that I can ever remember. Tyson knows it, and I just don't think he's going to take any unnecessary chances. You could be sure he wants to keep the knockout string alive. But 
he also is just not going to take any unnecessary chances. He wants to win a decision, win a fight. He'll be 20 and 0, still undefeated, and in his mind, I think, still well on his way to a heavyweight championship. But tell us, have revived his career somewhat, even with a loss, if he stands up. Well, this certainly is a respectable showing, and there certainly will be notoriety to the man who broke Mike Tyson's knockout string, especially if Mike resumes the knockout string after this fight. difficult to know why a crowd is booing. You can't psychoanalyze 8,000 people. I think it's possible that they're disappointed in Mike's performance. They came here wanting to see what, him do what he's done in his previous 19 fights, and he doesn't appear at this point to be going all out to satisfy them. Landed the left hand, but Tillis stood right there. Cut is no longer a problem. It has been effectively stopped. Tillis comes straight in. Tyson, one of the few times we've ever seen him swinging wildly. Good left hand. Tillis is still there. Tyson can be hit. He was openly disappointed with the number of times that Steve Zowski landed on him in his last fight. Any custom auto trained fighter prides himself on his defense. And Mike really was disappointed that uh, Zowski hit him with some right hands, really silly right hands that he should not have been hit with. It was just a loss of concentration. The right hand by Tellus was blocked there. A jab by Mike Tyson, a rare punch for him in his first 19 fights. A punch that he is smart enough to know that he's going to need if he's going to move up to world-class competition. He's been using it more in training and says he will see a lot more of it in this fight. He just tried it there until till it's knocked down two of them. Good head movement by Tyson coming in. For the moment, Tyson is not nearly as busy as he has been in some of his previous fights against much lesser opponents. No doubt a sign of the respect that he must have for a fighter of Tillis' experience. There's the punch that, in my opinion, is going to win the fight for Tyson. It's that right hand to the body. He won't knock Tillis out with it, but he will wear him down and bring his hands down so he can land punches to the head. He got him with the left. And you saw Tillis staggering backward momentarily. Not seriously hurt, but Tyson has begun to break through the guard around the face. And there's a right hand as Tyson continues to land and round two ends. Center, almost all of them rooting for the fighter that Upper New York State thinks of. And his opponent, he had to go all out in the three rounds, amateur limit. Lost to Tillman in the Olympic trials. Right hand lands flush on the cheek of Quick Tillis, but that was an extended right hand. He was not in close enough to do maximum damage. Yeah, but he's not letting go of Mike Tyson. He might be shaking his hand, which, which generally means that he was hurt by the punch, even though it was, as you say, extended. Simply a matter here of Tyson finding the range. He can't be too far outside, but he can't cut so close that he allows Tillis to grab him, as Tillis will always do when Mike lets him. Oh, 
Tyson can be hit. He was openly disappointed with the number of times that Steve Zowski landed on him in his last fight. Any custom auto trained fighter prides himself on his defense. And Mike really was disappointed that uh, Zowski hit him with some right hands, really silly right hands that he should not have been hit with. It was just a loss of concentration. The right hand by Tellus was blocked there. A jab by Mike Tyson, a rare punch for him in his first 19 fights. A punch that he is smart enough to know that he's going to need if he's going to move up to world-class competition. He's been using it more in training and says he will see a lot more of it in this fight. He just tried it there until till it's knocked down two of them. Good head movement by Tyson coming in. For the moment, Tyson is not nearly as busy as he has been in some of his previous fights against much lesser opponents. No doubt a sign of the respect that he must have for a fighter of Tillis' experience. There's the punch that, in my opinion, is going to win the fight for Tyson. It's that right hand to the body. He won't knock Tillis out with it, but he will wear him down and bring his hands down so he can land punches to the head. He got him with the left. And you saw Tillis staggering backward momentarily. Not seriously hurt, but Tyson has begun to break through the guard around the face. And there's a right hand as Tyson continues to land and round two ends. have learned not to lunge so badly with the left hand though. And there you see Tyson whacking away to the rib cage with the right hand. Again Cortez warns Tillis for holding behind the head. Tillis switches briefly to Southpaw and goes back. And again he holds behind the head. Mike Tyson is not doing his job in those clinches. His hands are free but he isn't using them. Right there, there's no reason for Mike not to rip punches to the body. We talked about his ability as a body puncher. He has it, he just isn't using it. All right, bring up. Let's go, step back. Tellus turns away for a moment to spit, but so far, he does not look hurt, as Alex pointed out. It looks rather fresh. Has had a tendency in the past to tie. This is not a good round so far for Tyson, who is missing more punches than he lands. And again, not busy in the clinch. That's frankly astonishing, because the opportunity is there for him to do a lot of damage. Barry gave a half-hearted effort at that combination we talked about, the right to the body and the right uppercut, but he didn't land it. He did land punches at the end of the flurry. And that's what he has to do with Tillis. He has to keep punching. He's just letting isolated punches go. Like a single left hook, nothing behind it. He has to punch in combination to be effective. There's a great tendency here to compare Tyson to another young heavyweight, Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist Terrell Biggs. Tillis extended Biggs to the full eight rounds where Biggs got the decision. And that was on January 25. Two good short chopping right hands by Tillis. Tyson waiting for Tillis to open up, and those two body punches did get Tillis' attention, and he grabs. Come on, Just the grimace on his face alone, I think, indicates that Quick Tillis was hurt by those two body punches. And the right hand got through the guard onto the cheek of Tillis, who looks a little the worse for wear now in the last minute of round five. So after a slow first minute and a half in this round, Mike Tyson has reapplied the pressure. He's shown you one thing today, it is that he knows how to close out a round and leave an impression in the minds of the judges. We'll be back right after this. We are back in Glens Falls, New York.
New York round 10. The crowd tries to liven itself up, to try to provide some encouragement to Mike Tyson. Most of them have come here today hoping to see a knockout and frankly expecting to see a knockout. Tyson tries to deliver with the right hand and steps in and throws the left. That's one of the things that's astonishing, to see a man of this size and this build with such quick hands. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that we'll be taking a station break right here at the end of this round, round three. I was saying in the fight against Jesse Ferguson, Ferguson fought a negative fight, fought to survive for the most part. The punch that turned the fight around was a, a combination, actually, a right to the body and then doubling with it, coming right up the middle. Let's go, let him go. Looks to me like Tillis is open for an uppercut up the middle the same way. Come on, get those arms out. Come on, work out of there. This is an important learning experience for Mike Tyson. He's going to have to be able to handle a quick Tillis to get to the top of the event. He is right now. And Tillis is making the mistake of trying to trade with Mike Tyson. He should be moving off the ropes. Instead, he got into a little bit of macho there, and Quick Tillis is not going to be around long fighting that way. Again, he scores with the right uppercut. Does Quick Tillis. Repeatedly, Tillis has scored with the right uppercut. But Tyson is beginning to wear down Tillis's defenses, particularly when he catches him against the ropes and then releases the hands. Round three coming to a close, and Mike Tyson warms to the task once again as the round comes to a close. Back with more after this word from our local station. Tyson, right hand, lands on the point of the chin, but he didn't get all of it. And a good left hook by James Tillis. And again, inexplicably, Quick Tillis grabs after he scores the best punch he scored in a couple of rounds. He should put punches together, punch in combination, and he might give Mike Tyson more trouble than he wants. He also can't lunge in with that left hook like that because he's going to get caught. And having felt what Tillis has to offer in the way of the uppercut and that one left hook which scored, Tyson now appears to be a little less shy about stepping up inside. But Tillis is landing punches. He's landing hard punches, and interestingly, Mike Tyson is taking them. I mean, he doesn't want to get hit with them. But one of the questions about him, as it is with all developing fighters, is can he take a punch? 